Here at Warfung, a native of Changdu prepares a hot and spicy hot pot to keep his team members warm on this chilly night. Blue team has tomato and egg noodles as usual. As night deepens, no one wants to sleep. They all sit together visualizing what the rest of the rally will be like in the days to come. Will Kaji be able to continue with his injuries? Will they be able to accomplish the rally as planned? Everyone feels dispirited. Early next morning, the members of both teams wait outside the hospital to hear the result of Kaji's examination. It comes as a big relief to everyone. Aside from the injury to his lips and the loss of a front tooth, Kajia is uninjured and he can continue. Today's starting point is the county town of Dingru. At 10 o'clock in the morning, both teams pass the border checkpoint. Ahead of them is Mount Giawo at 5,210 meters above sea level. This is the last tough mountain before the Mount Chumulangma climbers camp. Standing on top of the mountain, it feels as if heaven and earth are touching. From here, the road can be seen circling its way from the bottom to the top of the mountain. Ding Ru, from where they started today, is the lowest point. The gravel road extends 18 kilometers from the foot of the mountain to the pass at the top. It is a dangerous road full of sharp turns, and getting to the top feels like a never-ending battle. The endless turns are more than Yua Guofeng can bear. He gets off the bike and pushes it up the road. The team doctor is well aware that pushing a bike uphill at 5,000 meters above sea level can have dire health consequences. Yue Guofeng could well end up with insufficient oxygen leading to severe altitude sickness, so he decides to take Yue Guofeng's pulse. Yu Guofeng's heart rate is twice as fast as normal. Cutting edges at the turns proves to be an inadvisable solution. The fact is that pushing a bike up such a steep slope consumes more energy than pedalling it. The two teams are now conducting the rallies side by side, offering encouragement to one another. The heat, the bumpy road, oxygen insufficiency and shortness of breath are working together to test their limits. Finally, at around noon, both teams make it to the top of the mountain. It has been an ordeal. Four magnificent mountains, all with peaks at 8,000 meters above sea level, can be seen lined up to the south under clouds that are today hanging very low. One of these mountains is, of course, Mount Chumulangma. The members of both teams have been looking forward to seeing the famous mountain for five days. <laughs> While the teams take a break in the tents of local Tibetans, their photographer suddenly feels ill. He is suffering from shortness of breath and a terrible headache. It is altitude sickness. The doctor decides he needs to be rushed immediately to Tashizong, a town at a lower altitude. To 
prevent anyone else developing the same problem, the two teams decide they must make their way through the pass and down the other side without delay. In front of them are the Himalaya mountains. Under the merciless sun, there are no signs of life on the mountains, not even any vegetation. Against this dramatic backdrop, the people and vehicles further ahead look like tiny grains of sand. Nothing can be heard except the howling of the wind. However, even at this altitude, there is life, as the occasional appearance of a highland gazelle proves. This is probably the only creature in this desolate and hostile area. At around sunset, the team arrives at Tashizom, where they will stay for the night. Simmer 就不要去这些了 As Tasha is the closest town to Mount Chumulangma it is a well-known stopover point on the road to the climbers camp Every year in the tourist season this small town becomes incredibly busy Tibetan family hotels provide food and board for the passing tourists Today is the last day of the rally. Due to the accidents of the past few days, the authorities have decided to zero the scores of both teams. That means the race will be decided from this section of the rally and this section alone. Today's part of the rally includes a bumpy 40 kilometer long gravel road. Kajia has benefited from a day's rest, and he's back in the rally. At the moment, blue team is in the lead, with the red team close behind. But blue team is experiencing bad luck yet again. Their bike is broken down. This gives red team a chance to overtake them. Of all the temples in the world, Rungpu Monastery is situated at the highest altitude. Above its white pagoda, suture streamers flutter in the wind. Behind the monastery is the finishing point of the rally, the Mount Chumulangma Climbers Camp. At 
Around noon, both teams pass Rungpul Monastery and enter the eight kilometer final dash. Everyone is pushing himself to the extreme with one goal in mind, winning the race. During the five and a half days of the race, the two teams have climbed from an altitude of 3,600 meters up to 5,200 meters. In the course of this, they have faced and overcome numerous challenges and dangers. The real competition here has been between man and nature. In the end, it doesn't seem to matter which of the teams comes first. All the cyclists have been tested to the limit. It has been a relatively brief but nevertheless unique experience that will always live in the memories of those who took part. Thank you for joining us on today's New Frontiers. I'm Ji Xiangxun on CCTV International. Goodbye.